It is ladies' final day. Let's welcome our players. First out, from Wales, the 2012 British Indoor Bowls Council champion, Laura Thomas. And of course, our defending champion, please welcome Catherine Rednall. Well, don't forget to get in touch with us via Twitter, hashtag your tweets, BBC Bowls, and tell us your thoughts on how this final may go. In the commentary box for us today, it's a pleasure to welcome Commonwealth gold medalist Sean Honor, who is alongside John Price and Corky. Thank you, Rishi. Thank goodness we've got a bit of glamour into the commentary box at long last. In the shape of Sean Honor. She said, come off games, medalist from Scotland. Welcome, Shan. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Jack Vance, Rose amongst two thorns with you two. Absolutely. No doubt about that. Laura Thomas has had lots of time on the rink. And of course she has been in the final of the mixed pairs, three years running, so the atmosphere and the situation of this arena will not intimidate her in any way. But having said that, Catherine Rednall, well, she's been playing very steady balls. I don't think she's just been as good as last year, so uh, if she steps up to that mark, John, it could be totally different. Yeah, I think so, Corky. I mean, I spoke to Catherine last night. I think she found the carpet a little quicker last year. Enjoyed that pace, but she played well yesterday, second set. Hit the straps in the second set, and I think the, you'll see an improvement today. First two balls. Early chance to put some pressure on. Over 11 ends, of course. So, plenty of time for the players to get into this match. They can always afford to have a bit of a slow start, but uh, three shots three here, and Catherine will keep drawing, but she has got a very good weight shot available to her. I think Catherine will just be looking to settle into her draw. It's really important in sets play to get off to a confident start and just lock onto the weight. Well, expect the next one to come in. Well, she's just trying to miss the red ball again for cover. I'm not even worried about the fourth shot. Quick on the mat, Catherine. No hesitation, bowls away. Well, to be honest with you, I'm a little bit surprised she even attempted to draw that, John, because you know what it's like. Um, you know, we've been watching a lot of balls and you've been playing on the ring. You try and drop weight there, you inevitably drop too much. Thomas. So 
So, uh, we're still on Twitter, of course, and we will be all the way through to Sunday on hashtag BBC Bowls. It has been extremely busy, but we'll do our best to answer as many of your questions as possible. Well, John McNeil's asking a question about the shot clock. As we see that Jack just hanging on to the edge from Laura. And its introduction over the last season or two. John, you've played under the shot clock quite a lot. Yeah, I don't... I've got a big feelings towards it, to be honest, Corky. I, I, I'm a fairly quick player normally. The only thing I feel that it does in certain circumstances, you don't see much interaction with player and crowd. It takes that away from it because, obviously, you haven't got the time between bowls to have a little bit of fun. And I think that sometimes adds to the event. So that's the only thought I ha you know, have on it. I think this has been in. Well, it's one of those uh, other questions that's come through to uh, to us, and that is whether it should be mixed bowls we'll in terms of all competitions, Sean. And, and we'll hand that over to you because you know what the women's game is like. It's played often in the afternoon. Yeah, I think uh, it's very topical at the moment. It was in the news yesterday. Um, a lady had been um, banned from playing. Um, because it was a men's league and, and she wanted to play and the club wanted her to play in it and uh, what the president stepped forward and said that uh, wi women were just not as good as men. So I think it's very interesting debate at the moment. Um, <laughs> I think if players want to have the opportunity to play against the men, as I you know, would and other, other players do want to at any standard, I think that they should be able to. I think mixed competition is a good thing. I've played against many of the top women, and believe me, they are as good. <laughs> Interesting comment from that chap. But uh, yeah, he was very <laughs> strong with his views. And we get another question in about uh, dartitis. No, that's whenever you get the yips, really. In, uh, in golf and various other things, John, it, it does happen. Yeah, it's happened in bowls as well. I know of a few players, I don't think it would be fair to name them, but uh, I know of a few players uh, back home who've had this problem, and it's very difficult. It's a bit of a mental problem, really, isn't it? You know, to not release the bowl or the dart, so, uh, but they've, they've recovered and they've had good careers. Well, we don't have a, a name for that, but uh, it is a bit of the, the bowls yips as well, I suppose. And, some players do have it as we see this ball just rattling in again. That's a good end from Catherine Rednell. She's tightened up completely in this particular situation. So as we see the ball arriving, wanted to get a good solid connection on the red ball, but just pushed it to Three the red. side. Laura Thomas has a open draw in with a little touch in the jack to make three. As you say, John, there's been a few players. I could think of one or two very notable players actually. But uh, they managed to get it sorted out with a bit of coaching help. It's very much a psychological thing, though. And you can see the idea there by Laura. She played just overweight, looking to pull the jack through. Did have a shoulder to rest on as well, didn't she? Which is another option for her. Yeah, it was a good shot there, Sean. I mean, just overplayed it slightly. It's a much stronger end from Catherine. She's set it into the pace, which would be very important for her on the second end, having lost a three on the first. And very sensibly playing the backhand, the blind side here, to try and slide another ball in. No danger of the jack, and that's fair enough, that's okay. Didn't make the spare shot, but more important to get on the card. Two shots, Catherine Rednall. Length, 
exact length. A very easy action from both these players. No problems with their deliveries. Very smooth. Of course you would expect that at 19 and 29. So when you get a bit older that start things start to creak a little bit. family support at the back. Dad looking on sternly. So. School teacher, plenty of practice. Yeah, nice guy John. Played international bowls against John many years ago. Top player. One red. looking for the green ball to try and edge it out and one of the red balls has just dropped as well <coughs> well so easy to drop short but chance there to come off her own bowl. <coughs> Very close this time. Well, again, that ball managed to run on a little bit. One right. Has to be a little bit careful here. Yeah, her, her first couple of bowls have left her no option, really, but to, to just play the draw here. She'll be looking to just ease inside her bowl while she sits it down. Very close. Oh, what a ball. Great ball. Great ball. Perfect delivery from Toucher. The last ball of the end. One shot, Laura Thomas. Yeah, super last delivery. Played to perfection. Good weight, good line. Nailed it. Dark length, twenty nine and a half meters. That comes a longer track length and can't ask anything better than that. Just very slightly past, a quarter of an inch past. Very quick player, Catherine Rednell. Makes up her mind, gets on with the job. Mm, which I always feel is great when you're on top of your game, David. Sometimes when you're not, you need just to slow it a little bit, a little bit more care and attention.
one way. Oh, she's having a look with this one. Very close to the jack. Needs to dip now, dip now. Oh, good effort. But a good ball in a receiving position. It's just slightly in front now. Quarter of an inch in front. Good to see that shot played with a little bit of weight there, John, because uh, not so easy just to try and draw it, but anything behind the jack's not useful. Yeah, it's a problem for Catherine here. She doesn't want to get too close, leave a catch. Not an ideal One position right. there. Gives Laura a big chance of a fourth bolt. Yeah, a nice shoulder, and there's a, well, I wouldn't say an interested customer. Having a snooze. Oh. No, he's in a nice warm environment though. Oh, Bowles is uh, secondary. German Shepherd guide dog. Everyone's getting the opportunity to have a little chat with that lovely animal. Oh, too much weight. Just doesn't get back. Just forced it. I think probably trying to use the red bowl. I was talking to the dog's owner actually. He says he likes to bring uh, a pooch along because it gets so much attention. <laughs> Is that why it's worn out now? Having a little sleep. Yeah. Very it's wise. A hard life. That's a safe line. I'm gonna try and drop back. Good weight. Yeah, very wise. Very sensible. Girls walking up just to make sure everything's right. One shot, Catherine Rednell. Confirmation from our marker Alan Thornhill that it's one shot. Big crowd here as always. Potter's leisure. And just on that subject, I've just announced that just retirement and Potter's Leisure Resort and the World Bowls Tour have today agreed a new three-year contract to take them through to 2019 and a half for meters. the World Indoor Championships. So that's good news for everyone, I think. Especially a three-year contract. It's a very positive reaction to this event. I think the following of the, of the event, particularly this year, has been incredible. Sort of social media has gone crazy over it, which is can only be a good thing for our game. Yes, we uh, we've been trending well. I know. Do you know what that means now? I, I do, you do actually, Sean. Yes, you've that's, obviously that's been good. listening. <laughs> it's 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 the one thing about just you just find the nearest teenager and ask them what's trending about. <laughs> I think so I know all about it now. You and Tomo the other day seemed quite puzzled <laughs> by the whole uh, by the whole Twitter thing. Yes, well we're Twitter experts now, I think. Glad to hear it. What about you, John? Oh, I'm I'm modern. I am. Sean, I've got a young daughter. Corky is a, a relic from the past. <laughs> I'm a teenager, and I know what these things are now. It's a bit embarrassing when you have to ask them, though, isn't it? Oh, look, honestly, yeah. I'm not a not someone who gets involved too much, but there's been a lot of stuff on social media about the event. It's been very successful. Anybody wants to ask me anything about cars and engines, I'm more than happy to answer those. Good stuff. Good correction. Look of sheer determination on that face then, which is great to see. One green. This bowl 14 inches past Jack High. Yeah, that bowl 14 inches, that's probably the target bowl for Laura. Drops inside that to count. It's a good cover bowl as well.
enough to count. Two yeah, that's a pretty good ball. To force Catherine into playing with a bit more conviction, I think. Although just the slightest of trials will uh, be enough for her to score multiple. Wasn't far not away, Sean. No, not far at all. Too great. One of the problems on the portable rink, that shot is quite difficult. It doesn't get down very quick. It's reluctant to come back with uh, a few yards of weight, isn't it? And an opportunity here for Laura. Been quite evenly matched so far. Yeah, few good, ends. it's been a good start to the match. If anything, Laura, then we are a little bit more consistent with our weight at the moment. Good treble there. Second shots, treble. Laura Thomas. Yeah, it's built up ahead very well. Again, looking for the long jack length. Jack length, 29 and a half metres. Lord of Thomas on a backhand. Of course, the bowling family. Brother Ben, very well-known bowler in Wales. Sure, Ben will be trying to get to a television screen to look in this afternoon. Oh, he's heavily involved in the family, isn't he? You know, it's, uh, Ben's partner, also a very, very good player. Commonwealth Games in Glasgow was a very good event for the Scottish men, but the English ladies did extremely well, Sean. I think they must be very pleased. Yeah, amazing. It was an amazing tournament, and to come away with the medal count that we did was, um, yeah, incredible. Such a great experience all round, really. Very well organised and well executed, and, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. The coverage was good as well. Good for the, again, good for the sport. Too great. Yes. Every session was uh, covered. And the inclusion of the para, um, the para disciplines as well, I think, was excellent. Yes, and very, very good they were, and a very wide selection of all the different disciplines in uh, that particular area. Absolutely, the standard was very, very high. But now a loose end here for Catherine. She needs to settle down and start getting the first two balls close. That was the strength of her game last year, John. Yeah, it certainly was. She hasn't really caught the weight with a lot of consistency. This is better. Good effort, a little unlucky with that. As I say, I don't think she's caught the pace of the carpet quite as well as last year. <coughs> no chance for Laura, coming off the forehand. Drop onto the red ball. just underneath it where it wasn't too far away still just a one but another ball in the head that's an important bit she's keeping those options open by getting good balls in mm, not a lot on for Catherine either this is Tyler difficult 
Only tap on the ball, Jack will go to green. Really don't see many options available to her. Except just a drop off her own ball. Well, she's on the backhand. That's a very Quite narrow surprised. channel. Well, I couldn't see that one, Sean. No, I didn't see that one coming. I thought the the obvious shot for her would be to just be trying to dead draw off her ball. Very good effort nonetheless. Oh. Difficult. Didn't fancy that one, John, really. No, it's One just shot, Laura Thomas. No, I agree. I think it was a tough, tough shot. I think that perhaps shows that she hasn't quite settled down yet and picked the side that she's comfortable on. Talking to Laura earlier on, she was saying that, that to reach meters. two finals this week is beyond her beyond her hopes at the start of the tournament. Yes, yeah, a very good combination with Paul Foster, a very successful combination, I have to say as well. One ball away from taking the title again, but in terms of the singles, it meant that there was a lot more time on the rink. And it's competitive play on there is exactly what everyone wants. You know what it's like, John, you can practice all the time you want, but it's the competitive matches that make you sharp. Yeah, that's true. Totally different experience when somebody's firing balls back at you, Dave. Absolutely. Mm. Your ball, two feet. Better start by Catherine that. <coughs> so often in singles play that first ball. Very important, dictates the play. Oh, this is good. Oh, didn't want to tap on the ball. Held her in, but I think she was going onto the track, to be truthful. One green. Another good ball, capitalised on that. Well, extra weight. Gives her an option there. Yeah, I might be tempted here if I was loaded to draw again, close this right down. Any turn on the jack is good. Any movement on her wing bowl, so takes away the shoulder. Yeah, a couple of options there. Needs to finish. Oh, she drops on this. It's really good. It's very good oh. ball. Oh, it's a brilliant end. And out of that from Laura Thomas and blocked it on the way through. Three green. Ooh, difficult this one. Back position's in favour of red. Ball on the jack. See this ball, but it's blocking up the forehand, but there is a deep red one. Yep, down looking for her own ball on the backhand. It's going under very quickly. Got one. Oh. Well, taking one away just on the edge. Probably be happy enough just to have taken one off. Two shots, Laura Thomas. The way that ball was moving. Did go quick, didn't it? Characteristic of the portable rink. Anything underneath the line will start to move unless you've got big weight. Nine and set. This set would be all over. 
but uh, bar playing another one for academic reason but with four ends to go it's still possible Catherine will be looking to score on this end vital really just to keep her keep herself in it Jack Fence, 29 and a half metres. inches. Laura in good position in this match now. She just needs to close down the ends. Can drop a single. Keep the count off the card. Well, 10-3 up. You really just want to play a couple of really good ends to try and Take this set away. Don't want to leave the door open for Catherine to get back into it. One right. short again. Catherine really needs to get this one in. She's got a sniff of a chance to pick up a treble. On a very good line. Oh. Well, she's apologising. Right. She's getting that little glide, but... Well. She wasn't far away. I was going to say, she was in the area. You know, you're she going was. to get an edge here and there occasionally, but uh, she was very, very close to this. Yeah, good way to use the wall, isn't it? Wall of balls. Yeah, you know, it's, it's finished very well as well. It has. I think Laura's worth playing through this because she's got a front plant available to her. Well, down just slightly inside the drawing line and that just holds off. And she played a drive in her previous match in semi-final about three or four times. She was bang on target every time. She was, and she admitted that that wasn't her normal game. No. But she got it perfectly exactly. yesterday. It worked. She was trying to play the complicated shot there, John. Yeah, and that shot is a difficult shot. I mean, you ask any player that hasn't really bent there for 20 years on the portable no. rink. <laughs> it just doesn't do it. No, it's really difficult. The best player I've ever seen play that shot on the portable was Tony Alcock, David. You'd mm. remember that. Yes, Tony had the little bump delivery, but he played very much on the outside of the mat. Um, don't know if that's dropping in for three. It could be. Good movement on the jack. She didn't look like she liked it when it left her hand. She, she thought it was a little heavy, but it looks good enough for three. Two shots, Catherine Redknoll. No, not quite. Well, two's not a disaster for Laura, but uh, she'll be conscious of the fact she wants to win the next end. That length, 26 metres.
Not a bad ball by Catherine. Here's a little shoulder with the next right. one. Six inches short of Jack High. Well, one of the tweets has come in from Andrew Newell. Saying he's managed to watch his first game while the kid's at school. And he might just leave him at school because <laughs> he wants to keep watching. No, we want the kids to watch him as well. <laughs> and then say, well, how can we play this great game? Yes, yeah, so we want them to come back in and we go and get them. Go and get them immediately. Ooh. Well, Catherine's changed the jack length, but... Uh, she was under the line there with good One weight. Looking at the other side, I'd stick with the, the forehand if I was Laura at the moment. I wouldn't change sides. No, I wouldn't either, although there is a chance of bringing the jack towards the red bowl, but anything short on the forehand would be quite useful. Catherine hasn't got any back position. Now she just wants this one to drift inside the red. Oh, yeah, and that will do. Very useful there. And there's a lot of pressure on Catherine here. That's a, effectively a set lie against. Close for two. Well, just wonder. They might try and clean the three bowls out, Dave. Very much worth it, but uh, you know, there's that front red one in the way, which is a bit of a nuisance. Yeah, it's playing the controlled weight in the backhand. Well, she's pretty close with this. Got a chance. Very good effort. Got the hole. Oh, you can see that. Now, two metres out that it was going to go through that big gap, John. Or they just get bigger and bigger, those gaps, as you approach them. <laughs> as I said earlier, David, it hasn't got down in 20 years. Yep. It's a difficult shot. She opted for the backhand last time she played weight down, going this way, didn't she? I thought yeah, she might try and she had more to um, more to use on the forehand there with Laura's balls. Yeah, I thought, looking at it, there was a chance, you know, if she got a good connection, she could clean the three away and... Yeah. It was also a wide target because you had the red ball to come off as well. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it's about knowing the rink, really, and uh, picking the right shot to play and the right weight. It's never easy. You play what uh, the player feels they're comfortable with. Well... Or you don't have to be too adventurous at this because uh, we feel that you're probably lying two shots and I think that's a very good way to play the last ball <laughs> when you're 10-5 in front. Stay away from it. I was going to say, Laura's saying, Kat, where are you going? Because Catherine's I, hoping you know, that she's got a fifth ball. Well, exactly. I said it was the last ball. I was going, why is Catherine going down the, the other end? That would have been nice <laughs> to have another go at it. But she'd forgotten she had a ball at the back of the rink. She's in the zone. Yep. I know what she feels. So <laughs> the two times I wanted a fifth ball as well. <laughs> Very rarely you would ever see that happening quite funny in its own way but <laughs> she won't live that one down I should get the nickname five now 
<laughs> just everybody will call her five, looking for five poles. <laughs> Jack Lenz, 29 and a half metres. <coughs> Catherine's so quick on the mat. The shot clock doesn't really allow you to dictate the pace of the game. It's uh, taken that aspect out a little bit. And sometimes that can be good and sometimes it can work against you. But uh, she's a naturally quick player. She probably doesn't even realise how quick she is because I'm very quick on the mat. And when you watch yourself back, it's, it's quite a shock to see. It's sort of like a... Speed it up, you wonder what the rush is. Yes, and if things are getting tough, sometimes you just need to slow down a tiny little bit. You do. It's the best thing you can do is, is try and slow it down. Not always easy though. Good ball around there. Glad it's not us out there, Johnny. We'll be ambling up and down. Yeah, that's more. Forced upon us by our age, though, Dave. Yes, absolutely. She needs to get a travel year, though, Catherine, to, to prolong this set. Hmm. Well. So far away, I can only assume that that was deliberate, but I can't imagine it. Now Laura's going to need a cover ball in now. I imagine John should be looking something in there because the uh, you know, chance of building up the jack into this sort of area could pick up a two or three. I'm going to tad deeper, I think, and actually probably go past that red ball. Yes, there is another red ball beyond that, of course, and jack in the ditch is worth three, but even then... She's looking at for a four in the last end and really hasn't been many opportunities for a big count like that for Catherine. Yep, well there she goes. Trying to reach the red ball and not quite, but pretty close. Yeah, yeah. Catherine's away. She's playing the jack. Jack through. Is she firm enough? Well, she's in the area. Oh, well, ball out to, to Laura. Two shots in the first set to Laura Thomas. Well, Laura Thomas is a good value for that first set, no doubt about that. 14-5 is a comprehensive scoreline. Over 10 ends. She played very well. When Catherine did get the opportunity to shorten it, Laura had an answer for it. Well, we're still getting the tweets coming in. Hashtag BBC Bold. Keep them moving. We have a few more that have arrived. Maybe we get a couple of questions in now. Jack Lenz, 24 and a half metres. Natalie Fox has asked, when will they ever put the men's and the, the women's final on the same day? Well, first of all, it's not a men's final. It's an open final because men and women play in that event. So uh, it's not gender specific, but we have a number of finals that are over the week. So uh, there's lots of reasons why there's only one final on the day. And uh, it always starts at the first program. 
Molly Nivers. Will there ever be a disability event? <laughs> Not sure the answer to that one, John. No, difficult to say. There's possibilities, I suppose. It de depends on the programme, time, everything that goes into this event. Obviously, it's over two weeks, Dave, isn't it? And uh, it's very difficult to fit everything in. But it could be a possibility in the future that they will look at that. Oh, good effort and a good goal from Catherine. And uh, one for you, Sean, from John McNeil saying, uh, what balls would you recommend for a beginner? Well, I think there's so many different options available now. I think the best thing that any beginner can do is, is get down and spend some time on the green with playing with the variety. It's, it's personal preference. It's what's going to suit you. And it's going to vary according to delivery and a, a number of other factors. So I think the best thing would be to pick a set, have a go. I would always suggest sort of a mid a mid bias bowl. Um, I'm not a fan of straighter bowls personally. A lot of people are. Um, yeah, I think green time is the key. There's no right or wrong answer, is there, John? No, I'd agree, Sean, and I think to anybody coming in wants to start the game, most clubs have got coaches, and you go down to the local club and get your club coach to have a chat with you, and he'll offer you experience and let you know what the best bowl is and the size for your hand. I think that's the way forward if you want to start the game. And most clubs have got a bank of bowls, haven't they? And bowlers themselves are very willing to let other players try them out and that that's the best way really yeah definitely chat to other bowlers and see what's going to suit you well laura thomas has only operated with one ball so far in this end that leaves her at risk just on the wrong side Still a draw on the forehand. Can't afford to go running through and taking her own ball away. It's just sort of narrowed the line, that's the problem. Once you go inside the line, it sort of narrows up and pulls away. So that's why she's got two narrow balls, but looks like she's going to lose a double here. Two shots, Catherine Rednall. That's 24 and a half metres. Well, Twitter has been unbelievably busy, so hashtag BBC Bowls is where we are. Anything for Sean and John, be very welcome. Nothing too tricky there. We're only asking you to answer the hard questions, that's all. I think uh, it's time that Catherine in this set now is going to start asking a few questions of Laura. Good start on the first end. Needs to push on now. Pretty consistent though, Laura. Good weight today. Yes, very good lead. She played very well for Paul Foster in uh, the mixed pairs for the last three years. So. He's delighted with his partner. Fun great. Very calm and controlled, Laura, as well. She looks very at ease with the whole the whole situation. Of course it helps when you're when you're playing well. This one looks like it's just gonna go past the yeah, up. It's a handy ball though. Tucked in there. Yes, it's about making sure that the atmosphere and the conditions don't get to you. We've seen many very, very good international standard bowlers 
really just uh, fall apart when it comes to this sort of arena. And it's not for everyone. This one? Yeah. Uh, six inches past track high. Turn that chance for Laura to add another. Well, missed the chance, John. Oh, it's just given two bites at that. Yeah, good line for it. Just overplayed it. You know, one of those two had it gone in close to the jack. Catherine would have been in a heap of trouble, but as it is, any drop on her own ball will make it for shot. Better line with this one. Much better line, and the it's good. Her. Well played, Catherine. Uh, too many goes at it. Yeah, I picked the line, picked the weight. Easy game when you see it done like that, isn't it? <laughs> yes, right. but uh, it's also if you're getting that I'm many out. opportunities. But I think she has to run for the ball here. The option, of Laura course, John, is a little draw and to try and pick the jack up. If she was able to extend the jack through to the green balls, but it's a much harder shot. Yeah, I think she'll just be drawing to this, really. If you do pick the jack up, well, that's a bonus. Really want to drop another couple of shots. Needs to bend. Very good effort here. Yeah, it's very close to drawing this back again. Oh, oh what's what a great a, ball. Oh, that's a fantastic ball. Perfect. Well, well played, Laura. I was saying the ball was fighting it until it got down to last foot or so, but what a great ball One that shot, was. Laura Thomas. Yeah, she executed that perfectly. Decided that she wanted to go for the dead draw. Perfect line. Little nudge. Great stuff. Some good balls that end. Yes, yeah, great ball appreciated by the large crowd. Length, 29 and a half metres. The voice of Sandra McLeish, our umpire for this match. 29 and a half metres. Change the length this way, and that forehand becomes just a little bit heavier, and you have to push through it. Very easy to drop short. That's the idea. She won't be happy with that, John. No, two short balls, Sean. And it's not good. The centre as well, taking away the drive shot if she's in trouble. 
She just needs to be applying the pressure on this second set and she'll be disappointed with, with her opening two and that. Yeah, she started well first end, but I think the problem for Catherine today is that she hasn't been able to back it up end after end. <laughs> you would say in both in terms, Dave, she's in and out. Yes, yes, it's... Uh consistency has been lacking there's plenty of time of course to get back into this you know it's 11 in set and sometimes you just have to play one really big ball to turn ahead and suddenly it's like putting a switch on but she's leaving herself in a lot of trouble some ends i think uh, there's been a a couple of ends certainly that she hasn't had much of a much of an option to play weight because she's she's been lacking the, the back balls which hasn't helped her Sometimes it's good to just open up your arm and, and play a bit of weight. Laura, making sure she's behind with this one. If it stops in time, it'll be another shot. But it's drifted on, but it's no bad ball there. Leaving the backhand open, of course, and just a, a slight correction needed. The weight would have been okay for Catherine's previous ball. Just a little trot up when she looks at uh, the way the shot clock's going. Plenty of time. She's so quick on the mat. Well, this is all about getting back into the head. She's on a better line. Has to negotiate the front green one though. That's the same ball. <laughs> Just didn't make the adjustment. It's going to be two to green. Two shots, Laura Thomas. <laughs> Wonderful arena here, Potter's Leisure. And the ladies final, always very popular. Now then, Catherine, good opening delivery. Let's see if you can start putting a few close balls in. Apply a bit of pressure. Such a good, uh, such a good lead, Catherine. Now, I know she plays other positions now as well, but really solid lead. That's her forte. I always think in singles, Sean. If you get your first ball going, the rest of your game tends to fall into place. Gives yep. you that bit of confidence then. If you're scratching around a bit that first, you're always struggling. You see that with so many players. Yeah, I think certainly one and two are, are vital in singles. And if you get a good first ball, it's of course backing it up with your second, isn't it? It's, it's not dropping short, which is so easy to do. As we're going to see with this ball... That was the time to put one right on the jack, or at least within six inches of it. And uh, the back position was against her. Anything through the head was valuable. So, mm. you know, it's, uh, I know it's easy up here, don't get me wrong. But As Sean know, called uh, it really, David, yeah. there, you know, you need to back up the good first one. Yeah. That was the problem. Now the advantage has been lost. I don't think this is going to make it. Ooh, scrappy end. Scrappy ends are dangerous. You can lose two or three shots very, very easily. Catherine's got a big chance here. Better with this. Yep, she's taken it. And also, she's made it very difficult on that backhand to get in. So, Laura's going to have to look at this with a view to changing, but. 
Well, stick him in the backhand. Oh my goodness me, that's uh, not easy. Well, let's see if she's here. She'll be doing well to get a good third out of this. That's her loose end. Now, you're going to have one, do it early. But that is the loose end. It's going to lose a three here, or should lose a three. I'd be very surprised if Catherine didn't add a third here. She needs to, really. Give her a bit of a boost. Uh, shed a lot of room, John, but it's... Uh, not so far away to get Rover out of the kennel just yet, but uh, at the same time, in the context of this match, it's a very loose end. It's number three. Well done, took a chance, John. Yeah, it was a big end, needed that. Three shots, Catherine Rednall. Needed a little bit of inspiration, Catherine, and that could be the end. Jack Clint, 25 metres. And his dad, he'll be feeling a little bit relieved now. Be willing her to dig deep and and carry on as as that last end was. Well, it's a, mu it's a much better start. I'm happy to see the bowl behind. To be honest. Yeah, the secret so far for Laura Thomas is she's controlled the game really. She hasn't given Catherine too many opportunities. Unfortunately, that was a bad time to get a bad end. Most end of the match. She's back on song here, though. Well, yeah. well played. Her first balls have been very good, haven't they? Yeah, you know, I think if you're going to have a bad end, you have it early in the set. You've got time to recover an 11 end set with you lose a three on the fourth end. You don't want to do that round about number eight or nine. Oh, very good reply. Well, well, Catherine. One red. Two inches past Jack High, the gap is inch and a half. Oh, it's right on the edge. This one. Um, more the width than anything, actually. Another meter or so, it probably wouldn't have been too far away. Gotta be careful because of Catherine's back bows, but well, you know you can't search down that tight line. That's just very, very difficult. You're almost better just trying to draw this, and that was very much an in between, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah she's been drawing so well, Laura. She doesn't want to get into a stage. She starts chasing a few shots now. Just needs to keep playing a normal game. As the finish line is a, a long way away. You can't see it too early. That's not very good either. Oh no. Well, a bit of pressure on here and... Laura's played this side incredibly well. Better line. 
No, it just needs to reach on that line. It has to hurry, though. Oh, not again. Oh, oh yes. Laura, well played. Oh, what a brilliant last ball. She's done that a few times in this match. She certainly has. One shot, Laura Thomas. Yeah, it's a great ball. This went back just to the normal drawing line. Good weight. It's a cracker. It's a cracker. Where have we heard that before? Length, 29 and a half meters. There he is, Paul Foster, watching his pair's partner and uh, hiding away. So he's finding a little bit of a niche for himself up there. We've seen him up there a few times. Quarterfinals day tomorrow for the singles. Always a very good day. It's another decent starter, first ball. There's always something attractive about the quarterfinals day, isn't there? Because you're sort of four matches with eight players that have been on the rink a long time and They've honed their skills and you're going to see some great games. The crowd have all picked their favourites as well, so they've watched them all week. So it's a, an added, added buzz for them to see them out again at that stage, I think. Impossible to call it as well, I'd say, with the oh, men. Absolutely impossible. Only one of them. Take it. Yes, it will be a fantastic lineup. There's no doubt about that. And um, always like Friday, really, really good day. I find a lot of people ask me which are the best days to come along. I said, well, take your choice, really. But uh, ladies' final on the Thursday, men's quarters on the Friday, right. always highly entertaining. Cool. Yeah, taking the time out now, Laura, to have a look at this. Just enough room there to, to draw past that ball. Laura has two timeouts remaining. Yeah, the backhand certainly looks out of commission. Bear in mind it's her third delivery. The forehand looks better because she can set something up. Just to draw. I would suggest a, it's a heavy draw to this because you don't want to drop short and anything past the jack is always going to be good. So it's certainly worth arriving at it. Goodness me, look at that crowd. It's just massive here today. Further than she'd have liked, but I suppose it does give her another option for number four. Yes, I think she would have been looking really about uh, 15, 18 inches behind if she was not going to get the shot. Edge of the ball. Mm, clear run would have been much better. 
This might force Laura into something. Five or two, Laura. Yeah, she's got a shot on now. Split on the two red balls. Got a back position as well. The only thing is, she just doesn't want to be too wide. So. Oh, she's it's in the very area close. here. Oh, very two. close. Oh, oh that was brilliant. Well Great ball, Laura. Oh, that was brilliant. Now, she ball. did this in the semi-final. I think that's a shot that it may not be her normal style, but my goodness me, she, she's so accurate. She did. She picked the line. Great ball. Right, wait for it. Very good. Catherine's still got, still got room to draw. Very, very possible. Mm. A great ball from Laura. It must have been developing that side of her game, John, because it didn't, wasn't there last year. And Catherine, I don't know if you're inside the line here. Will you run? Oh, she's got the weight, but didn't have the didn't have the right line. My shot, Laura Thomas. Nine and a half meters. Laura Thompson Wales took the first set, fourteen shots to five. It looked very comfortable, and it was that. But Catherine Rednell, the defending champions, come storming back in the second set. Now in the seventh end, five all. Five ends to play, 11 end set. again just to get back Laura's been the more consistent player over the game she had control of it for the most part but it's the sort of thing in this format you need now to put the game away you can change very quickly and normally a player takes a second set going into the tie break is favourite it's all about momentum Seen Catherine come back many a time. You can never write her off. She digs in deep. Yeah, certainly a good battler, no doubt about that. And so Laura is just the, the more consistent. Too but great. there's been nothing between the two players in the second set. The first set's over. Better wait with this one. Just needs to hold. Two green. <coughs> Wouldn't be bad for Laura here. A ball a foot down is good. Uh, so anything in front of the jack would be very useful. But not that far short. Oh dear. Well, the only thing you can say it takes a little bit of a, a possibility of, of Catherine playing the two green balls. I don't know if you can see those. Well, 
She can probably get around them, but uh, she can see them down the backhand though. Because there's a front plant coming in. Oh, that'll go away very quickly if you're trying to steer it around something. And I think that's what happened there. Well, you just can't do that. You know, it's... Um see, that's my only... It's not a criticism of Catherine, but I just think she needed to take a little look Two at shots, that because of the possibilities for her. Mm. Rush the delivery a bit. Well, as a skip, Sean, you probably would have been looking at that but as a, uh, for a running ball, but... Yeah. Back, backhand plant was there, actually. Yeah, I think I'd always, uh, I'd always opt for the more aggressive shot, personally. I think Catherine had a few options there by playing more weight at it rather than less. Jack Benz, 29 and a half metres. So on the eighth end, four to go, only two shots in the second set, so all to play for. Well, it's just about wait now to get back, and that red ball really looked in the way, but there's the confidence in that backhand of the players. One green. At this length in particular, though, that forehand's okay. shaking her head. Mm, that's a bit of a worry when you're shaking your head and not sure and you end up four inches from the jack. I think that probably sums up how she's feeling at the moment. Yeah, I thought Laura might attack this a little bit. She's inside the line, though. won't hold that. No, if you're going to play that line, you have to be definitely going a bit stronger. I would say yes, keep to that line and go stronger, don't go wider. The idea is right with the funnel that Catherine's bowls have created. Yeah, but it looks lovely from the mat. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Great opportunity there. It's just hitting the target 29 and a half metres away. This Going might deep. change things. Yeah, that's a good ball. It is a good ball, good place. Be careful here, there's only one against her. Oh, it's I'm surprised she played the running ball, to be truthful. Just be drawing this. They don't come up very often, do they? Time out ah, there you go, you see. Must have heard me. You would have been up there like a greyhound, Pricey. Well, so it's just having a little bit of a, a breather and take a look at the this situation. You, if she'd only one down, I wouldn't be too adventurous. No, it would be worse to play the backhand, far better to play the forehand, because that's where the shot ball is. You can't give another one away there. It's possible a heavy draw, you see, just to drop inside that, that red ball. Heavy draw, turn the jack for three. Where the carpet's playing, you will hold that inside road. Well, once again, this one's going to go away very quickly. Yeah. Those shots are just so difficult to play. Mm. 
murmurs from the crowd there. It's very hard for them to realise just the high degree of difficulty on that particular shot. Shots, Catherine Rednell. Catherine Rednell has stormed back into this match, having lost the first set, 14-5, 10 ends, no need for the last end to be played, but 7 all after 8 ends, all to play for. That's a much better start from Catherine. Yeah, that's a great first ball. Bad for line. Mm. Just dropping a fraction, great effort. Mm, very good reply. It's a sort of set you can see just going down to the last end and the last bowl or two. It's got that sort of uh, Look about it. Staying on the backhand side. There's a gap between the two balls. Well, this actually ended up in a very good place. It certainly ended up in a very dangerous place for Laura. Two balls left. I can see a lot of players driving at this and get it out into the open. That's certainly what I'd be playing with the target that wide. You're so aggressive. I oh, know. Well. Oh, so lack of conviction there. Yes, how many times have we seen that? You know, just dropping on the inside and gets a bit heavier out there, so you end up your weight just dies off. Yeah, it's surprising because Laura's played that attack in bowl so well during this match and in other games. So she's got it in her locker. I think she forgets. I really do. I think what it is, it, naturally she's a, a lead player. Lead. Yeah. That's it. It's it's if it's, if it's not your go-to game, it's, it's sort of... Yeah. It sometimes isn't the first thing you do, is it? All of us would have been really looking at that and thinking, you know, jack right through, split everything away and you've got the last ball. When you play it with enough weight, you're going to move enough of them to, you know, even if you still are still down, you just give yourself a chance, don't you? Yeah, and she's got problems now because obviously the back position is against. She hasn't got a lot on now. I, I'd say just a draw, really, stun the green onto the red. That's about all I can see, Dave. I certainly wouldn't risk anything else. She could very easily go three down if she, if Catherine's front ball locked onto the jack. Yeah, uh, I think she's uh, just trying to get her own ball. That's so all. Can't see her getting back with this though. Anything over the weight. Just a bit on the high side. She actually played that with more weight than what we oh, thought would be the, the drive. Yeah. 
Redknoll would be very happy to get over the line here with a single shot to force the tie break. Yeah, I think it's fair to say it hasn't come easy to her today. She's having to dig this game out. Laura's controlled long periods of the match. So nine ends in the second set have been played. Eight shots to seven for the Ipswich. Student and the 19 year old Catherine Rednall, a defending champion. <laughs> Two ends to go. She'd really like to win this end to give herself a little cushion against Laura Thomas from Wales. She played the jack slightly longer than she has been playing, Catherine. Yes, yeah, but a good first ball. Very, yeah, very good start. Takes a disappointment away very quickly. This match, Catherine's played the good first ball but couldn't follow it up the second and left Laura Thomas the opportunity to get in. Good ball by Laura there. And she's hanging in there at 8 7 and certainly got a chance to, to win this set. Very good effort here from Catherine. One red. Yeah, good adjustment. Back toucher. Yep, just over it. Well, even if Laura loses a single, she's in with a, a chance in the last end. She just has to draw that to win the championship. But I suggest Catherine really needs another one there. Yeah, it's possible to remove that red. I wouldn't contemplate too ball. much. I think I'd play, probably play the same ball. It'll yep. overcomplicate this. Absolutely. Just try and draw another if you can. Switching sides. Ooh, going very wide. She's going deep on it. Happy enough to go into the last end. Two shots up. I'm not sure if that's as big a cushion as you really need. She already had one over there covering the respot. You know, that's I think I would have been in a, like you, John, dropping in on the backhand. Possibility if she attacks this, she could edge that red away. Yeah, a lot of danger, you know, the green ball would probably lock on the other red ball, Dave. He came off it, so opportunities. I think the jack is not going to go in the ditch, therefore Catherine probably didn't need the deepest ball. Like if I was Laura, I'd just be trying to nudge the red out. Yep, exactly. One's good, two's brilliant for her, isn't it? Oh, she hasn't got the weight, I don't think, to hold this line. Oh, such a shame, that line oh, was good. That was a perfect line. One shot, Catherine Redmond. Well, we don't have to wait too long to find out what's going to happen. Catherine has three timeouts remaining. Standard of the second set between the two players has certainly been better, hasn't it? More nip and tuck. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, Catherine's raised her game a little bit. She needed to after the first set. I think she's, just, she's settled down a bit, hasn't she?
track length 27 meters. Last end of the second set. Catherine Rednall defending champion 9-7 in front in a set that she must win having lost the first one 14-5. Bit of pressure on here. Got a little bit of a cushion, can afford to lose a single shot, but no more. Decent start, good ball there. Mm, she's done that a few times, second ball. She has just luck in a trot. Well, time to apply the pressure, same ball as the last. Slightly favour the green bob. Your bow, uh, 15 inches. Coming well. Mm, well, just a little bit far away. She really needed a good ball there. Really tight one to the jack. And just a little bit too room, too much room here for Catherine. Oh dear, is that going to fall away? It has. Well, now, Laura Thomas, have you can draw the shot here? This oh. is the bow. She will not want to be leaving this till her Too last bow if she can avoid it in any way. Two green. That's a match and championship lie. Well, anything even a little bit short here, John? About a foot short would be good. Yeah, I wants to leave the gaps, I think, as well. I want to fill up the gap up between the jack and the green bow. Laura Thomas from Wales. Very close again. Runner Would up it in the, back. the mixed pairs and she's popped another one in, I think. She has indeed. That's actually very good. She's uh, saying to Catherine Rednall, you're going to have to draw this shot to save your championship and to keep your title defence alive. Oh, she's not showing any tension, but... It'll be released. She'll definitely be feeling it. Well, I think she's out on a lovely line with this. I really do. Got it away very, very well. Very the good ball here. The weight looks better. She's drawn it. Weight looks a lot better. Is it going through? Oh, well, she's fallen back. Is it second? Doesn't look like it. Asking Alan. Is there two? He's not sure. He would, he's very confident. Oh, I would be extremely confident. She's, she's going to declare it. Doesn't even want to play it. Good shot. Second set and the match. Laura, uh, Thomas. Laura Thomas takes the last end with a treble and wins the match. Two sets to nil. What a wonderful performance for the lady from the 29 year old Laura Thomas has now added the, the ladies' singles title to two mixed pairs that she's won with Paul Foster. A fantastic achievement for her. Really come into this match as second favourite to the defending champion, but showed all of her class and played it extremely well in the large crowd, responding to the two players as they walked down the rink after an intriguing game. Well, there's no doubt about it, that was a, a super match. 14-5, well, first set was all really Laura Thomas, and uh, when we got to the second set, it was a totally different affair. It was very, very good. Excellent game in the second set. As we'll see from the montage of some of the very good balls that were played in that. This is the third end with Laura Thomas. 
couple against. Bangs it right on the jack. She did that a number of times to go into a 4-2 lead. Catherine Reddell not looking away with things though. But we see again Laura Thomas with her last delivery, bang on the jack, putting the pressure on Catherine Reddell. But she responded in the fourth end with the treble of the second set to take a lead of 5-3. And once again, Laura Thomas, a front toucher with her last ball. But showing her class and being able to take out balls with weight. A new dimension to Laura's game. And we all thought that this was going to draw the shot. But it just crept through with a little bit of extra weight. And Catherine Rednall congratulates Laura, as expected, a match that was played in wonderful spirit. To 14, nothing in it with regards to touchers. But Laura Thomas was just too consistent for Catherine Rednall today. But Catherine came back into the match very strong and it could easily have made a tie break. So I've got both players alongside me now and Catherine, first of all, a very different experience for you this year. How do you feel you played out there today? Um, obviously I feel I didn't play as well as I can do. She really struggled in the first set but again Laura didn't let me get anything near it. Um, second set I played a lot better but just couldn't find the bowls when I needed them. Thought my last bowl was really good but... Did you feel you did well to hang in in the second set because you obviously had the edge going into the last end? Yeah, I mean I was two up with the last last end to play but I never felt sort of confident with what length to play or Laura just nailed the long jacks especially going that way so I knew I wasn't going to put it there but any any line down there and Laura found it so I knew I was under pressure. Well to be fair to you you're the youngest ever winner last year and to still only be 19 and being two successive finals a pretty impressive effort. Ladies and gentlemen the runner-up Catherine Rednall. But Laura, for you, the first ever woman from Wales to win the title. How does that sound to you? Oh, wonderful. It's, it's, it's been a pleasure to get to two finals this week, but to just go that one step further today and win it and fly the flag for Wales is always great. So Absolutely. And I know you were, you were pretty hurt in the defeat on Tuesday. It was a tough one to take. But did that serve to inspire you today a little bit? I think so. I just had to. I knew I had um, singles games to play. Um, obviously, disappointing on Tuesday. But you've just got to try and focus on the next game. Um, just try to up my level of play and just to concentrate on my drawing. Um, I just. I knew I had to play well to beat Catherine. Absolutely, so. and of course, it is great for Wales. But you've now joined an illustrious roll of honour. Some great names are on the list of winners of this. What does it mean to you that you're now? the name 2015 champion? Oh, it means everything. Um, it's, it's a great accolade. It's probably it's the top one on the list. Um, obviously, nationals, um, any title is important, but to, and especially singles, when you, you've played for yourself. Obviously, as well as everybody else, you play for yourself. Um, so, yeah, well, great. Well, enjoy the celebrations. Ladies and gentlemen, the runner-up, Catherine Rednall, but your 2015 <laughs> ladies singles champion. Put your hands together for Laura Thomas. the Managing Director for Potter's Resort, John Potter, and the Head of Marketing for Just Retirement, Andy Humphreys. Please give a warm round of applause for the runner-up, Catherine Rednall. And now, please welcome the Just Retirement Ladies World Indoor Bowls Champion for 2015, Laura Thomas. Thank you. 